Hello and welcome to another episode of the Alter Your Health podcast. This is your source of information and inspiration to promote the holistic transformation of your health and the health of our planet. My name is Dr. Benjamin Alter. And my name is Dr. Susanna Alter. And we're both licensed naturopathic doctors who support individuals in reversing disease and reclaiming optimal health through plant-based nutrition and mind-body medicine. So if you're new to this podcast, I'm the host. Dr. Susanna is the co-host. On uh, once a week, we release an episode on Mondays that is, you know, usually me interviewing somebody in the field, in the realm of health and well-being. And then on Thursdays uh, at 1 p.m. Mountain Time, Dr. Susanna and I come on and we connect with our audience in the plant-based and stress-free Facebook group. We record this episode live in that Facebook group, and we send it also out in the world on the podcast. So we're excited to be coming at you live through our plant-based and, fi- plant-based and stress-free Facebook group. And we're really excited because we're in the midst of a whole food plant-based challenge. And uh, it is, uh, and it's going really well. We're getting really great feedback, a lot of great engagement. A lot of people are kind of entering the realm, the, the 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 world of plant-based nutrition. A lot of people are already kind of pretty more experienced and advanced, and just learning more and optimizing their plant-based diet and lifestyle, and learning how to really navigate that with clarity and confidence. Uh, So it's just been a really great week. Yeah. And for those who are in the challenge right now who are live with us, remember, we're going live tonight for session four at 6 p.m. Mountain Time. So definitely be there. Don't don't think that this session is... Yeah, this is not session four. This is not session four. This is bonus. Well, it's not bonus. This is our our weekly podcast. podcast recording. Uh, Yeah, but we, you know, last night in session number three in the Whole Food Plant-Based Challenge, at the end, you know, we we were talking about cravings throughout that session. We were talking about what cravings might mean, what they might, you know, what the body might really be calling out for. Because we believe that symptoms and feelings and cravings and all of these things can be authentic wisdom coming from our body, coming from our higher self. And if we can really tune in and understand and listen to these authentic messages, then we can really be guided and supported sustainably in our health. Um, but we came across the topic, We the topic came up of emotional eating. And we really didn't get a chance last night in session three to talk about emotional eating from our perspective, which I think is is very different than a lot of what I hear a lot, at least in the realm of eating disorders, quote unquote. And, you know, I'm not an expert in eating disorders or anything like that. I'm not an expert, um, <laughs> like in the sense that I, I haven't studied that a- a- in any way. I haven't really had any personal experience with that myself. Um, but we still hold a different, unique philosophy around quote unquote, disordered eating, around emotional eating. And we're excited to share our insights on the matter today, which I think really does authentically support people in transcending, releasing, having greater understanding of their habitual tendencies and patterns relating to food. Yeah, because I think I think what's really important, the the overall message and direction that we want to guide people towards is really trusting the wisdom of your body you know tuning into the body and checking out hey what is my body wanting to eat right now and for a lot of people it can get really complicated like is this an authentic craving is this authentic hunger or is just is this just my emotions? Am I just bored? Am I just looking for something to put into my mouth? Yeah. And uh, yeah, so we really need to kind of tease apart and and show the difference between those two. Yeah, and you know, I don't know about you, Susanna, but so often I hear people say, oh, my body just really wanted that donut. 
and oh, my body just really wanted that greasy piece of pepperoni pizza. Or what I hear more is, yeah, I know the pizza isn't good for my body, but it fed my soul. Yeah, that's the thing I hear a lot. <laughs> I hear that as well. So let's let's like unpack this topic a little bit and and share our insights on the matter. Um, so maybe I'll ask you a question if that's okay. Like, um, what what is emotional eating? You know, what, what would, how would you define emotional eating? Yeah. Well, how I would define it is, you know, whenever we are having insecure thoughts, negative thoughts, you know, just thoughts that make us feel bad, that bring up those emotions, whether you feel lonely, whether you feel anxious, whether you feel angry, whether you feel sad, stressed, stressed, exactly. It's like the emotional eating is actually in that moment, it's a solution to that icky feeling that you feel because it's like, oh, if I just eat this chocolate, it's gonna make me feel better for a moment, right? It helps take us away from the discomfort of whatever emotion we're experiencing. And so, yeah, it really is. It's our best effort to try to comfort us in a situation where we feel bad. But when we get in the habit of doing it over and over and over and over again, it can lead to some serious health consequences. Yeah. And I, I like to, you know, one of my, I feel like one of my missions in life is normalizing the human experience. And I like to, I want to just take a step back and just explain a basic truth of reality that every human being experiences emotions, like all of the emotions. Every human being ex experiences anxiety. Every human being experience, experiences sadness or depression or overwhelm or fear or fright, whatever it might be. We all have the, uh, it, it's like a beautiful part of the human experience. It colors our our life, these emotions. So it's not something to control or change or overpower or overcome, but it's simply important to understand where the emotional experience comes from, which is from our thinking in the moment. Um, so this is kind of another topic that we're not going to get into, which is the inside out reality of the human experiences that our feelings come from our thinking our feelings don't come from our outer experiences. So it's not the weather that is making us feel sad. It's not the cloudy day that's making us feel sad. It's our thoughts about the cloudy day. Oh, this means that I can't go outside. Oh, this means that, um, you know, it makes me think about my grandma who is sick or, you know, the, it's, it's those thoughts, that missing link between the experience and the feeling. Um, so if we just, you know, take a step back and just realize that every human being has this is is intertwined with this phenomenon of feeling and it's a gift then we can like take a step back and disengage and and not be so caught up in the feeling experience but realize like oh you know i'm i'm feeling a little anxious i'm feeling a little stressed i'm feeling a little overwhelmed right now it's because of my thoughts around this circumstance, this situation. And like, then, then it, we realize like, oh, I'm, I'm just experiencing my humanity. There's nothing that I have to do about it, change, change it or, you know, fix it or control it. And that level of understanding, for me at least, in my experience, gives me a little insight that separates me ever so slightly from being entangled and in, you know, enmeshed in the feeling and in the thought. It's, uh, you know, some spiritual spiritual teachers or whatnot talk to this about cultivating kind of the, the witness consciousness where we can step back, see things from a higher perspective. Um, so that's kind of maybe a good framework or ground foundation to lay as we move forward talking about emotional eating, which like you brought forward, Susanna, it's just one of many possible ways of expressing yourself in the midst of emotion. We can do emotional running, emotional artwork, emotional music listening, emotional eating, emotional journaling, 
Um, we can do anything in an emotional state. And just because we do it in an emotional state doesn't mean it make it wrong or bad or anything like that. Obviously, there are you know healthier and more productive for our physiology ways of of um, moving through emotions and being with emotions. Drugs and alcohol obviously is a, is more devastating. Food it can be devastating, but really what I want to bring up and focus on in this conversation is our thoughts about emotional eating. And I think a lot of people who get enmeshed in this tendency of emotional eating then criticize and judge themselves for their behavior. Oh, I can't believe I ate that bag of potato chips, that pint of ice cream. I'm such an awful human being. How dare me? I, that made me feel bad and now I feel awful kind of mentally, emotionally. And then they, you know, get in this cycle. So that's, I think, the really important thing to break free from. Yeah, yeah. I'm remembering last night in session three, we were just kind of grazing over this topic. And, and I think it came out of your mouth like, oh, and some people have the tendency to emotional eat and that's okay too. And blah, blah. Then you went on to the next yeah, subject. Just, oh, yeah, yeah. And that's, and what? Emotional eating's okay? And we got some questions about that. What do you mean emotional eating is okay? Yeah. And yeah, we're not saying that it's a super healthy practice to do every yeah. day. Every time you feel <laughs> sad, go get yourself a pint of ice cream. Like no. that's not what we're suggesting. No, but what we're suggesting is really bringing a big level of self-compassion to yourself and understanding that, you know, even sometimes when we get off track. So, you know, I'm not totally immune to emotional eating. Sometimes it can be so subtle. Absolutely you know? not. I just, you know, absolutely not. <laughs> I do. And like I just said, I do everything emotionally. This morning I went on an emotional run and that, you know, I was aware of I feel emotional and I'm running and I didn't think, gosh, I'm such a terrible human being because I'm not uh, healthfully dealing with my emotions. And this, you know, it's like there is no quote unquote healthy, proper, perfect way of dealing with emotions. Our preferred way of dealing, you know, quote unquote dealing with or I hate the word processing emotions is cultivating an understanding and insight as to where they're coming from. So we have just that, once again, a little bit of separation, a little bit of breath and freedom to not be so enmeshed and entangled and overcome by our emotions in any one moment. Right. But if we are overcome by our emotions yeah. and we do eat something that we typically don't do, it's only going to make the situation worse if you judge yourself and you berate yourself and you have all this guilt about, oh, I can't believe I did that yesterday. I can't believe it. Because uh, uh, uh. when you do that, you're bringing in more negative thoughts, which make you feel more strong emotions, which can get you in a cycle of doing more emotional eating. And if you just consider the state of the nervous system when you're criticizing yourself and beating yourself up inside, your nervous system is going a little haywire. You know, what we call the, the sympathetic branch of the nervous system, which is our stress branch of the nervous system, is, is firing off. And, and that does not promote healthy digestion, healing of any sorts. And we know that over time, chronic stress leads to several different physical illnesses over time so really you know if if you like i'll use the word slip up and you know behave in a way that when when you slip up yeah when you slip up because that is <laughs> part of being a human it's like don't you it's, it's like reframing that completely yeah as it's not something bad or wrong it's like just part it's it's like what what is you know some of there's so many metaphors and analogies here but um like uh is there one about poop like everyone yeah. oh yeah, yeah yeah okay what, <laughs> that analogy you're, you're, i know you're good at, yeah you're good yeah at it. so it's like everyone everyone 
well, okay, there's a few analogies. <laughs> like everyone inhales and everyone exhales. Exodus. It's part of being human, yeah. you know? And if we only judge inhales as good and look at exhales as bad, then we're judging ourselves half the time. Yeah. Same for eating and pooping. We all need yeah. to eat and we all need to poop. But for some reason, you know, pooping has some, I don't know, silly judgment around it yeah, or some it, ickiness around it. So it's it. like happy, <laughs> you know, just put simply happiness, sadness. It's like two sides of the same coin. And I think a lot of people certainly want to feel happy more more of the time and judge themselves if they feel sad and want to fix that. But then, you know, understanding that it's just like part of the beauty of the human experience to have this dichotomy of, uh, you know, feeling. Yeah. yeah. And I'm seeing this comment here. Ah, I don't want to slip up. Well, so the beautiful thing is that these slip ups, you know, these these times when maybe we ate a few more cookies or we whatever, you know, see that as a beautiful opportunity, an opportunity that like your body, your body can then give you the feedback of, oh, you know, it actually didn't feel that good to eat 10, 10 cookies or, <clears throat> you know, for me, the most recent example, because you know, like Ben said, we're not immune to this. The most recent example that's coming up actually is over the holidays. So I haven't been drinking much alcohol at all for the last four years since I've been with Ben. Uh, but every now, every now and then, there's a moment where I'm like, hey, I want to celebrate. I'm with my family. I want a glass of champagne. And what I've been finding is that, so over this, these last holidays, I was offered a glass of champagne and and part of me was like, well, you know, I felt all nostalgic, like, oh, I love the feeling of champagne and oh, it's, it's, oh, oh Susanna's so. got very refined taste when she, I don't drink often. Or but, sparkling wine, it doesn't have to be But when I do, it's <laughs> champagne. Yeah, but, but, you know, it only took a few sips for me to actually then start feeling some feedback from my body. Like I actually started to feel a little bit of a headache and I could have said, oh, Susanna, you're so stupid. You're so stupid for accepting that glass of champagne. Oh, you're gonna regret this tomorrow. You're gonna feel hungover. Just think of what it did to your liver, blah, blah, blah. You know, I could have done that, but I was like, instead, I just said, wow, I'm so grateful that I had this opportunity to remind myself that drinking this actually doesn't feel that good. And, you know, obviously we can replace that glass of champagne with a cookie, or we can replace that glass of champagne with a self-critical thought or, um, yeah, which is something, you know, the, the thing about the champagne is like, I, I won't, I'm not going to get into that. Forget, okay. forget that I said that. <laughs> okay. Um, but, but, but was yeah. that a good example? I thought that was a good example. Okay. I thought that was a good example. And, um, you know, so I, th I know a lot of people hear the words that are coming out of our mouths and have a hard time really allowing these words to settle and sink in and land in a place maybe that maybe evokes insight or clarity where in terms of where you are with your experience of, you know, emotional eating. Um, and it's okay. You know, it's okay. Uh, that's kind of another, I think, important thing to bring across is that even if you're in the midst of a binge and you're just laying on the floor surrounded by bags of potato chips or whatever it is and you are just in the deepest of holes like that is totally okay too and the reason why it's totally okay and the reason why we can totally 100 percent trust that it's always okay is because at our core essence we are innately healthy and well and Sometimes it takes these extreme reminders and wake up calls so that we can start to get out of our way a little bit and allow ourselves to rise up naturally to that healthy equilibrium. 
Um, but that healthy equilibrium and that clarity and that peace and that health is just built into who you already are. You know, we talk about all the time in the physical realm of physiology and natural medicine that the first most critical thing that we must do to support the body and healing is removing the obstacles that are naturally that are lying in the way of the body naturally healing itself. And the same is true, like we often say time and time again, in the realm of mental health, clarity, peace, well-being, we have to, you know, quote unquote, remove the obstacles that are getting in the way of that clarity, of that peace. Um, but the thing is, like, we don't actually have to remove those obstacles. Those obstacles remove themselves once we stop latching onto them with our thinking. We, we, we take a breath and we look in another direction. You know, if it's like, you know, <laughs> like quite literally, if it's a pota bag of potato chips, you take a breath, you look in the other direction, and yeah, there, I'm sure, oh, that I need to finish those potato chips. Oh, I need to finish those potato chips. And there's the, you know, the dopamine and all the hormones, and it's like all the stress response, whatever it is. But you, you look in another direction, you open up the window, you see what's going outside, and in some time, that need, that, you know, we'll call it a craving, that, that need, that insatiable need to finish the bag of potato chips, that dissolves as our thoughts naturally drift away from that into something new. It's only when we're looking at the bag of potato chips that our thoughts are going to be consumed in that. And then, yeah, maybe we'll be, you know, walking down the street and we have a thought of about the bag of potato chips, but that thought can just go on by, like, you know, go on by. So, yeah. Can I talk just a, a brief bit about the authentic hunger versus this kind of emotional yeah. craving? For sure, because that came up as well last night and we only had an opportunity to gloss over that. Yeah. So. Yeah, so, you know, we, we mentioned, okay, what is the difference between real authentic hunger, like your body's wisdom actually telling you, I want to eat that, versus that craving coming from you know, an emotional place inside, a, a Ugh, I need that kind of place inside. Yeah, this is really important. Yeah. yeah. And so the you have a built-in system in your body to help you differentiate between these two and it's your feeling state. It actually is your emotions. And so if you're wanting to, you know, eat a bag of potato chips, but you also notice that what comes with that desire is an uncomfortable uncomfortable sensation inside like, oh, I just need it or uh, or maybe you feel anxious yeah, or can, maybe we can just call it tension. Tension, yes. Whatever form of tension you feel in your body, that's an indicator that you are basically swarmed with lots of thoughts, you know, lots of whatever quality of thought, of negative thought that leads to the emotion, what we were talking about earlier today. Versus when you're in a peaceful state, when you've got a relatively clear mind and you're not overwhelmed with lots of emotions, that's when we are more in tune with our innate wisdom inside. That's when we get those aha moments, those insights. And it's also where we get the, the small insights like, oh, hey, I want to fuel my body with a baked potato tonight. Or, oh, I really am craving some fruit right now. And so, you know, what we say is that your authentic wisdom, it's never really going to lead you to unhealthy ways of taking care of yourself. Yeah. Or, you know, like maybe, maybe it will. Like maybe, yeah, like, it's like, true. You know, the, I take that back. Yeah. Like the unhealthy, you know, unhealthy will put in quotes because, you know, like I, I know we're in the midst of this whole food plant based challenge where we're talking about all of the healthiest options to and choices to make to fuel your body. But um, it's all on a spectrum. And it's like, 
okay, you know, you ran a marathon and there's a bag of potato chips and like you just need that, like some, uh, you know, you just need that salt. You just need that fat. You just like, that's okay. Like, you know, there are it, just taking all of the judgment yeah. off of everything, I think is the ultimate goal. And to just be able to indulge when you want to indulge. And if you indulge with, with a little bit of tension, then allow that tension to release and feel good about yourself. And <laughs> what just flashed into my mind for whatever reason is Lizzo, you know, and like <laughs> how she carries herself unapologetically in the world. And I doubt that she is... I don't know what she eats <laughs> and um, I hope this doesn't sound judgmental, but if she eats like, you know, junk food, I doubt that she's like really criticizing herself and beating her up after, uh, herself up after that. Um, but yeah. So anyway, it was that bad. No, I okay. just, I'm curious why you brought it up because, I, because I mean, I think what the, the point I wanted to make was really the difference between when we know where, eating out of an emotional desire versus, you know, cravings from an authentic place inside. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah. yeah, just driving the point home that, you know, the, when we, when we really start to learn our feeling state, when we start to like tune in with our feeling state and, and are more mindful about our eating choices, we can really see the moments where, there is that tension. There is that anxiety. Like I can feel sometimes like I just need to make a batch of whole food plant-based chocolate chip cookies right now. You know, it, I don't know. I, I I'm that. not, I'm not you, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, like sometimes it's like, I want that dark chocolate bar. <laughs> like, And I'm not like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe I just had that dark, dark chocolate bar, you know? So Yes, Hopefully, ho you know, we're starting to get a little bit uh, wandery, but hopefully that's not your feeling state in this conversation with us. Hopefully you're having some clarity and insight around your specific behaviors and patterns and tendencies and able to navigate and understand those tendencies with compassion and understanding and love. That's That's really the take home message and intention of the conversation yes yeah so any kind of last wrapping up things i don't think so just if you're interested in joining our next whole food plant-based challenge in february come join us come yeah we, join us. we uh we're gonna do another one of these or something very similar at the end of february you said that right yes yeah and the other announcement is for those of you who are tuning into this podcast wherever you're tuning in from i so appreciate your presence and you listening and tuning in and would be so grateful for a comment and a rating and a hit a subscribe and all that good stuff uh so that you get the next episode when it comes around next week so thank you so much and we love you and we're grateful for you. Bye for now. Peace and love.